Hello, welcome back to another video where we're solving over the wires war game Natas. I do love these challenges and right now it looks like we have a challenge where we got some lead speak going on. Hey kids, you remember Pearl, right? Wanna go old school read up. And then there is no source. Can you have sauce? There is no source. Normally there is a view source button down here. Uh, we can of course view the source of the web page by pressing Control U. Uh, we can see that we have a select here with a bunch of options. And we can also try the functionality here. So we try, we select Pearl Underground, and we have Pearl Underground 2345, and now basically it looks like we're viewing some kind of text. Let's take a look at the source. And they're just embedding a bunch of data inside of a pre. Pretty cool. Uh, nicely formatted, nice little ASCII art here. Uh, maybe one of these texts here has a clue for us. But there's a lot of text to go through. So, <clears throat> now I'm thinking, just looking at this URL up here, like, could we not try, like, file etc password? That did not work. What about etc password and a null byte? Nope. What if we tried some path traversal, traversal stuff, right? Because right now, just looking at file equals, I'm thinking, oh, well, remote file inclusion, local file inclusion, maybe even command injection. That's what I'm thinking. So I'll just try some very easy low hanging fruits in the beginning here, but I don't see any anything working. So next thing I'll try then is, I'll send this to the intruder and also to the repeater. So right now you can see the parameter A here listed and that's the one that is currently in use. Uh, I'll try something like index.pl. I'll try to include the Perl script itself. Uh, also, I make sure that I note the, the length of the byte down here. You can see 1865. I'm gonna use that as a reference for when I consider the input to be normal. Uh, I also added an extension right now, and also keep in mind that when I selected these files here, there was no extension. So maybe these are don't have extension. I'm, I'm assuming there's some files in the back end here that are being included or the content is being shown, but they might be called like something like .text, right? And with me using the extension here, um, that will break that. So I just tried index without the dot text and I see the same bytes. I don't see any increase in bytes, which is um, which is how it should behave, right? But maybe if I included index now, we would have two indexes, maybe index embedding the index, maybe we would have a like a forever loop, an infinitive loop that would just make a server go out of memory, but it doesn't seem like it worked. So any other things that I could think of like maybe if we'll do dot dot slash index and I still see the same results. Maybe if I include dot, what if I do dot dot? And right now I'm like, eh, bored with repeater, let's try to fuss. Because the fussing tends to find a bunch of low hanging fruits. First thing I'm gonna fuss is, mm, we'll just do all bytes, 256 bytes. Uh, these are gonna be in the get parameters up here. So I'm gonna leave them in the first round, I'm gonna leave them a URL encoded. And then I'm gonna try URL decoding them as well, but in this first try, there was something there. In this first uh, attempt, we're just gonna leave them uh, URL encoded, to just not break the functionality and the middleware. So there's one outlier here, outlier, where we have some difference. So when I gave it a percent 30, we had a difference. I'm not seeing what is different though. So I'm gonna control click these two here and I'm gonna send the compare to compare the responses. So I can now see what differs. So you can see that the time and the content length differs. Oh, okay, right. So on the, on the request to the left where we have 1854, we see now that the pre has been removed. So there is no more pre, there is no more content to be shown. It looks like we broke something, to be honest, with percent %30. So why don't we take a look at ASCIItable.com. Take a look at what percent %30 means. So percent %30 is, is that a zero? 
So why, when we give it a zero, why does it differ? Ooh, maybe Perl has these like file descriptors and zero represents something else. And we're trying to include maybe standard in or something like, like this, right? Like what if we had something like this? Now you can see it pre appears again. Interesting, interesting. So whenever you have interesting stuff happening, you want to use that for your next fuss. So you basically save this byte now, percent 30, and you bring it forward to your next attempt at fussing. Okay, so I don't see anything other, any other interesting things here. So we'll just basically take this intrusion here and we'll do this, percent 30, and then we'll fuss anything after. In fact, anything before and after maybe. We'll do before afterwards. So, and we try again. So here's the original request. You can see 1854, this produced this tiny, tiny little discrepancy where we don't have the pre. And it does not look like any success whatsoever in finding anything that has to do with like any change here. Uh, so what I could potentially do then is Maybe I can try to do a URL decode on these, just to see. This will break the middleware, by the way. So you see all these 400. So these will cost the middleware to just say, hey, bad request. But you never know if there's something that might stick on the back end here. For example, yeah. So basically, these characters here are now being treated as part of the URL now. Uh, the semicolon. Kind of interesting that that one sticked because semicolons they are a part of a command injection the ampersand is normal that we would see the 1854 because now our request basically looks like percent 30 and something else so we would have another parameter here this is original uh, the semicolon is kind of interesting so i'm going to use the semicolon further so I'm going to go to positions here. I'm going to add a semicolon here just to see what happens. And a bunch of 1854s. Um, I, I don't see anything that will now provide us with more luck. Like I don't see the results changing whatsoever in this column over here. So I'm thinking, hmm. Maybe I need to start using dictionaries now, like like attack dictionaries. So I can't leave this as it is, to be honest. I don't necessarily need to remove what's there. I can start to, for example, add attacks. Since we had a semicolon, why don't we try to do some command injection? So we'll do Linux fuss, and this is all uh, UE, that means URL encoded. So we're going to leave it as URL encoded. See what happens. Keep in mind, 1854 still, re me still means a weird, but not necessarily an interesting result. Uh, I did not see any luck there. So another thing I want to try is, so we're working with files here, maybe some local file inclusion. Also remote file inclusion we could try. So let's try LFI here, path reversal UE. And we need to specify a file. So we'll do match replace. So we'll replace file with mm, index.pl. because we know index.pl exists. Uh, I kind of also want to try, so maybe this is a, 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 a rabbit hole, right? We don't necessarily know if this will lead us anywhere. So why don't we just try to fuss here, um, like this, and also with command injection for Linux. So Linux fuss, uh, we'll at least add this one here. Do we want to add this one here as well? 
Sure. So with this attack here, I see there's some timing attacks in here, so we want to add a column response completed as well. All right. So far so good. Uh, any stuff going on here? Nope. So this one is 100% normal. So leave that one out. What about this one? Oh, so here's something happening. So you can see the pre has been added here. 1865 is also a normal result. And yep, yeah, so 18, uh, 1854 on the original request. So we're gonna leave these ones out. Now here, any luck with the fussing? Uh, 400, this means that we're doing, we're breaking the, oh. We're breaking the, the URL here. I think we need to do URL encoding. So instead of URL decode, what we're gonna do is we're gonna do add URL encode because we're breaking, see all these 400s? I don't wanna see those 400s. So let's just, uh, why don't, why did I do that? Why don't I do uh, URL encode? We'll use this one here because it's a built-in feature. So whenever you have 400 bad requests, it basically means that the middleware, the middleware, so the web server, the load balancer, whatever you have in front of the application is responding for the script and saying, hey, this request cannot be parsed properly. For example, here, it probably happens because of this. Nah, maybe because of this, but I'm not sure what's going on in this case. Might be because of this hash here. Yeah, so the hash should normally be, be captured by the browser and it should be applied to the DOM. Instead, it's being sent to the web server. The web server just complains and says, nah. Oh, here, oh, this is what we want to see. Look here. So 1865, all normal, then one with 1925. 1925 when given a pipe ID in a semicolon. Huh, that's so strange. So a pipe, which on Linux, so yeah, so it, from, from the left side to the right side, so we can do, for example, LSLA pipe and the output, standard out from the left side will go into, wrong screen here. So LS-LA pipe will take the left side's standard out, put it into the right side. For example, here you can grab for, for example, text. And I only have one file here with the word text. So pipe, might also have a special meaning in Perl. I'm not sure on that, but we're seeing something interesting. Instead of ID, let's do PWD here. So here you can see the output. So this is command injection. Yep, PWD, var vv not as 29. So that seems to be easy mode then. Let's do LSLA. Oh, just kill the request. Let's do plus here instead of a space. Oh yeah, beautiful. Beautiful. Now we get all the files up and running. So we can maybe do uh, cat plus index.pl. Yeah. Uh, so funny, funny. Here we have source code. Oh yeah, yeah, of course. This is now shown to me as HTML. So here you have this weird stuff. What the hell is this? And then you have this open file descriptor. Okay, so it looks like all we gotta do is grab the flag. So let's do uh, cat plus uh, etc natus web pass natus 30. Uh, oh, meep. Can we do password? So cat etc password. Yeah. Okay, so that seems to be there's some filtering going on. Let's take a look at index.pl. I didn't read the source code very well here. So if file, if file, tilde natas meet. So maybe avoid the word natas. I'm guessing. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not. I've only used Perl for exploitation before. That is binary exploitation and creating A's and stuff like that to do buffer overflows. So I'm not a big, uh, I'm not big into Perl. So let's do uh, cat plus etc. Then we'll do star underscore webpass. 
and then we'll do just uh, star 30. Ah, and there we go, password to the next level. Copy, let's try it out. Natas 30, uh, Natas Labs over the wire org. Nastas, that's a typo. Nadas. Why bother, right? Why bother piping when we can be smart about it? Not a 30. Hey! And we're done. Next level. Not a 30. So, pretty cool little uh, challenge there. Um, definitely had to fuss this one. Uh, keep in mind when you fuss, you want to always fuss the least there's every possible byte that you can put in so when i did the fussing mm, here i specified here in this field here i specified all bytes from zero zero all the way up to ff and then i'm looking for discrepancies sometimes you find something and you need to apply those bytes with a new fuss following so you have some known bad bytes that do something to the back end and then you want to fuss again with all possible bytes at the end here when these things fail you like they did me you want your methodology to say hey now start fussing with special characters all possible special characters and so on and also using word lists that you saw me using so using specific dictionaries and word lists that have known attacks in them and make sure that your attacks stick Make sure that URL encoding is turned on or off based on where you are in the URL or if you're in the post request and so on. And basically that's what makes it successful. So I hope you like this video. Uh, leave a like as normal and leave a comment if you have some questions or you wanna tell me something. Otherwise, subscribe if you want updates for more videos. Stay tuned guys, love you all, bye bye.